The thought of having a DNC procedure can be really, really overwhelming and can be really confusing. So today I'm gonna to share with you what a DNC procedure is and what you need to know before, during, and after surgery. Coming up. to my channel, my name is Josephine and I'm a registered nurse, I'm wearing my scrubs today. If you are new here on this channel, we talk about the journey to pregnancy for new moms, motherhood and inspiration. And if you are returning, you are awesome. I love you guys. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about what a DNC procedure is. And uh, from my personal experience, I have worked in pre-op, which is pre-operative getting you ready for surgery. And I have worked in recovery and um, what they call it step down or where you get discharged from surgery. So I'm gonna be sharing with you what you need to know before surgery and what are some doctor's orders that you will see before and after surgery. And we're gonna talk about the surgery itself. So let's get into it. Okay, let's first talk about what a DNC stands for. So a DNC stands for a dilation and curettage. And dilation actually just refers to them opening up uh, your cervix. And the curettage is actually an instrument that they use, um, or it's a, I believe it's called a curette, where they just scrape the uterine lining and take all the tissue out that they need. Now there are multiple reasons why you can get a DNC, but for this video, we're just gonna be talking about a DNC after a miscarriage. Once you have a miscarriage, your body will either do two things. It will either expel the baby naturally and you don't need surgery, or it won't recognize that your baby has stopped growing and you need to get surgical interventions to take out the baby. Now surgical intervention is really important because you don't want to keep the baby that's not growing anymore in your body because what that can do is it can lead to increased bleeding and it can put you at risk for internal hemorrhaging or it can cause infection. So this is why usually doctors, once a miscarriage is diagnosed, will allow the max a week before you have a DNC. Usually they'll try to schedule a DNC earlier than a week, uh, but I have seen doctors where they'll give the female's body a week to naturally expel it, and if it doesn't, they'll go ahead and proceed with the surgery. Now we're gonna be talking about what you need to do before surgery. Number one is you're gonna need to talk to your OBGYN and obviously get a consult. Usually after your miscarriage, they will actually sit you down and tell you what your next steps are. And this is actually when they will talk to you about a, what a DNC procedure is and get you to schedule a day and time of when the surgery will be. Now this is the time for you to ask questions. What a DNC is, what do I need to prepare for a DNC? What does recovery look like? Because then your OBGYN will actually be able to give you the time to explain the procedure and make sure all your questions are answered. Number two, she'll probably tell you that you need to get some lab works done. And depending on how healthy you are, if you need an x-ray um, or if you need additional tests before the procedure. Number three, you will have to go to your surgery center or wherever you're getting the procedure done and speak to a preoperative nurse. This time is really meant for us to get a history on your medication, what you're taking over the counter or prescribed, any anesthesia history that we need to be aware of, um, and any type of medical history that we need to know going into surgery. Okay, once you get your interview with the nurse done before surgery, here are a couple of things that she will probably tell you. Number one is one week before surgery, don't take any medications such as aspirin, ibuprofen, Aleve, any type of NSAID medication because that could increase your chances of you bleeding during surgery. Now, if you are in pain, then we recommend Tylenol for pain one week before surgery. Number two is nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night prior before surgery. So the day of surgery, when you wake up, don't eat breakfast, don't drink coffee. Uh, if you are a smoker, then don't smoke. Number three is she'll give you an antibacterial soap that you need to bathe in the night before surgery and the day 
of surgery, so the morning of surgery. So just make sure that you do the night before and the day of with this antibacterial soap. It helps to prevent any type of infection during surgery. Now, if you are getting value from this video, definitely make sure that you like and subscribe to the video. Okay, let's get back into it. And number four, after you shower, the morning of the procedure, make sure you don't put any creams, lotions, anything that's gonna make your skin a little bit slippery because we put electrodes on you during surgery and if you do have lotions and creams, it's gonna prevent that from sticking. Now let's move on to what you need to know for the day of surgery. Now once you check into the surgery center, uh, you'll be taken back to your own room and that's where you'll see your preoperative nurse. She's gonna get your vitals, she'll get your IV, some starts and fluids, and um, get some lab tests if they need additional lab tests. In this room is where you will also see your OBGYN before the procedure. You'll see your anesthesiologist. Uh, before the procedure and you'll see your surgery nurse before the procedure. Now this is really nice because you can ask questions to the anesthesiologist, to your OBGYN, and make sure that all your questions are answered before the procedure. Now this procedure is a very quick procedure. It's usually done within 30 to 45 minutes to an hour, just depending on your doctor and how fast they do the procedure. You'll get wheeled into surgery. All you remember is going to sleep, and then you'll just remember waking up in the recovery room. And we keep patients in the recovery room for about an hour to make sure that their vital signs are stable or okay after anesthesia and make sure that they are not profusely bleeding after the procedure. So now, once you have been in recovery for about an hour then and everything looks okay, then we'll go ahead and send you on to recovery. and. Depending on your facility, they call it step down, recovery, discharge. This is where the nurse will go ahead and get your family members that they can, so that they can come and see you. You can go ahead and have something to drink, usually some type of juice, and you'll have crackers to eat to make sure that you don't feel nauseous before you leave. And then this is where the nurse will do discharge instructions with your family member because Unfortunately, since you had anesthesia, you can't drive or sign any papers legally to discharge yourself. Can't do that. Mm -mm. Now, some discharge instructions that you will hear your doctor tell you are, one, you can actually go home and start a regular diet. There's no diet restrictions that you need to be on. Now, obviously, if you're feeling a little sick, then start with a soft diet or soups um, and then advance as tolerated to a normal diet. Number two, is if you develop a fever of 101 or greater that you need to make sure that you call your OB-GYN doctor as soon as possible. This actually could just be a, a tell that you're getting an infection. Um, so your OB-GYN doctor probably will prescribe you an antibiotic or have you come into the office early um, and then she'll give you further instructions. Number three is you will have bleeding for the next couple of days. Now the heaviest will be the day of surgery and the day after surgery, and it should start to lighten as the days progress. Now you will have bleeding accompanied by cramping, and that's just the uterus trying to expel uh, any of the excess blood that's in there, so don't be alarmed. Now, if you are starting to see on the third day after surgery that the bleeding is getting thicker, it's getting darker, or excuse me, it's getting brighter and it's not letting up at all, then you need to call your OB-GYN doctor and let them know that the bleeding is starting to get heavier and brighter red. Number four is no vaginal insertion, such as sex, no tampons, no douches, nothing in the vaginal canal for six weeks. Number five, make sure that you schedule a follow-up appointment after six weeks. Now, some OB-GYN offices will actually schedule a follow-up appointment earlier than that. Just make sure that you follow your OB-GYN's recommendation as far as a follow-up appointment. And number six, make sure that you don't take a bath the day of the procedure, but you can take a shower the day after the procedure. This depends on your OB-GYN doctor on how, what they prefer, but I have mostly seen no baths the day of surgery, so don't go home and take a bath because that can increase your chances of infection. But you can go home and take a shower. Showers are fine um, until you're cleared by your OB-GYN to take a bath. Now again, 
Remember to always follow your specific OBGYN's instructions as far as recovery. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you call your OBGYN office and make sure that you are always staying very clear with your OBGYN to make sure that you are following best practices on recovery and what you need to do before the procedure. I hope that helped you understand what you needed to prepare for for DNC and what recovery looks like. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as possible. So next week, I'm really excited because we're gonna start our Christmas series and we're gonna share some of our favorite things that you can get for new parents and moms and dads, etc. So definitely make sure you turn in for next week's video because it's gonna be a fun one and I hope that Wayne, my husband, is gonna join me. So, you just have to wait and see if he will or not. And remember guys, I always say on this channel, it's always a great day to grow. Grow in life, grow your baby, grow yourself, grow emotionally, and grow spiritually. I will see you guys next week. Bye.